happy Sunday. I've been getting a ton of questions from you all to please review the Kenzie at home hair removal device. So I have a video going back a few years ago on laser hair removal and I kind of overview it there. But you know, I will say this, there are a ton of devices on the market for at home hair removal. And what I have always said is true is that these at home devices, their outputs are not as strong as what you would get with an in office treatment. But when it comes to at home hair removal devices, they certainly are an option. And for a lot of people, it's a much more affordable, accessible option and something that is easier to keep up with than going in for laser hair removal, especially now with, with the pandemic and everything. Uh, there is a risk to damaging the eyes with using a device like this because of the light output, um, but they seem to be actually very safe and effective. They can either be used as a complement to in-office hair removal, laser hair removal, um, if you can't keep up with all the sessions or they're just too expensive. And for a lot of people, this is a very viable and, and attainable way to to reduce hair on the body. The Kenzie device, as with all of these at-home hair removal devices, it's a IPL, or intense pulse light, so it's not technically a laser. The difference between intense pulse light and laser is laser is one wavelength, and one, basically one type of, one color, uh, very intense, penetrates very deeply, much stronger, in other words, whereas intense pulse light is a few different wavelengths, and it's more like, if you think of a laser as a spot-focused beam, and intense pulse light is more like, like a flashlight. So it's not as focused, but it definitely is a viable option for uh, hair removal. These techniques, both laser and IPL, are referred to as photoepilation. And the way they work is by targeting energy to the hair follicle, specifically in the, um, and what's referred to the bulge region, that's where the hair stem cells reside. What's gonna happen is one of two things. The hair follicle that's being targeted is either going to be told by the energy to shift to the resting phase of the hair cycle, so you'll get a transient reduction in hair, or the other thing, which, which is what you want, is permanent hair, hair removal. And permanent hair removal can occur by one of two ways, either by causing that follicle to scar down so it doesn't make any more hair, or more commonly, by causing it to miniaturize. And basically, it changes from producing a thick, coarse, terminal hair to a baby vellus hair, kind of a peach fuzz. So ultimately, you definitely can achieve permanent, long-term, sustained hair removal in the treated area, but what's most likely going to happen is that those hairs are going to become baby and vellus hairs. So in other words, when you run your hand over your skin, you're gonna feel like peach fuzz, essentially. So it's not gonna be that bald, freshly shaved, slick feeling, but for most people, they're happy with the, the change to peach fuzz from coarse terminal hair. Now with in-office procedures, you need three to eight treatments spaced six to 10 weeks apart to achieve sustained hair, hair removal. And this gets really expensive for people. And so that's where a device like the Kenzie thing becomes appealing because it's something that you buy once, it's like $225 and then you can do it at home and you know, you, you have, it's less expensive basically. But it's not gonna work for all people. This type of thing is ideal for black hair and fair skin. The reason for this is that that allows the IPL to really focus exactly where it needs to be and not be distracted by surrounding pigment. Uh, the energy is directed towards the pigment in the, in the hair follicle. And so if you have a darker skin type, there's more larger pigments, if you will, surrounding the hair follicle for the energy to be distracted by. And so it doesn't typically work if you have a darker skin type as well. Specifically, if you are Fitzpatrick photo type four, five, or six, you're unlikely to achieve much benefit with this. 
and importantly, you are more, more at risk for adverse side effects of hyperpigmentation. The, the energy is gonna be more distracted and when it picks up on those pigments in the surrounding area, it's gonna heat them up and that can cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and scarring. So it's not gonna be right for Fitzpatrick phototype four, five, and six. Those skin types, they fare much better with professional laser hair removal. But if you're Fitzpatrick phototype one, two, or three, and you've got an area that has dark, black, coarse terminal hair, this is something that is certainly a viable option that can get you good, sustained hair removal. It's really important if you choose to pursue something like this that you not use it on top of a mole or a dark, what you might consider freckle. The reason for this is that, again, the pigments in that surrounding mole and freckle are gonna distract the energy and can cause adverse side effects. Also, the energy can alter the appearance of that mole and make it look worrisome. And then under the microscope, it might look a little funny. So it's recommended that you not use this device over a mole. Before photo epilation or hair removal by a laser or intense pulse light, you actually want to shave the area that you're treating. That allows for a more focused um, energy transfer to the follicle. If you have a longer hair, um, then there's more, there's a greater distance that that energy has to travel and it's more likely to get distracted and not be as effective. So you want to shave the area, but um, while you want to shave the area, you do not want to do anything like plucking, waxing, threading, tweezing, because when you pluck the hair, you'll notice it has that dark black pigment at the end. People refer to that as like pulling it out by the root. It's not actually the true root, but there is, it is the pigmented part of the hair. And that's what the, that's what the energy is looking for to target towards. So you don't want to pluck or anything like that. You will basically just be removing the target. So don't pluck, shave, shave is best. Now I mentioned not doing this over a mole or a dark freckle. You also don't want to do it over a tattoo. Absolutely not because the tattoo pigments, the tattoo inks in the surrounding dermis, they are going to, they're going to be a distract, a major distraction for that energy. You can have a really bad adverse effect with a really bad adverse effect as opposed to a kind of bad adverse effect. You're going to have adverse effects if you do it over a tattoo. So you can't do it over a tattoo, a dark mole, and you want to shave beforehand. And last thing I will say in terms of tips and tricks, do not, I mean, this isn't a tip or trick. This is just a don't do. Do not do this if you have gone tanning, either in a tanning bed, which please just don't, please just don't go in a tanning bed. Your risk for melanoma will skyrocket as soon as you get in a tanning bed. I'm not, I'm not making this up. It's absolute fact. But if you've been outdoors and you got a sun-induced tan, especially on your face, you know, that's not uncommon. It happens. Um, if that happened, don't, don't do this until it fades. But in short, you know, the Kenzie hair removal device, it is definitely a viable option. Who do I really think this is gonna be useful for? Um, women who have um, facial hair growth that is dark black, especially a lot of women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, they have hair growth on the face and they spend a lot of time shaving it or attempting to remove it. And that can cause ingrown hairs that are miserable to deal with. Those ingrown hairs can heal with hyperpigmentation. This is a much better alternative. Likewise, in the bikini area, summer is coming. Uh, you may be wanting to wear bathing suits and most people who don't do uh, laser hair removal or IPL hair removal, they do something like shaving, waxing, plucking, uh, sugaring, there are so many different ways to remove the hair down there. Uh, you know, tying it to the end of a, of a locomotive, no, I'm kidding. But yeah, this is a much better option because with shaving, plucking, especially in the bikini area, there's so many convexities and concavities, ingrown hairs are inevitable with hair removal down there. Even if you have the best technique, it is likely that you're gonna get some kind of irritation with those types of hair removal. And you're also very likely to get ingrown hairs that can 
uh, just become irritated. They're more likely to be become secondarily infected down there and you get little what's referred to as a folliculitis. I mean, it is, it can cause a lot of problems. This is a much better option to, to consider. Um, you get sustained, permanent, at least reduction in the burden of hair down there. I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, one of the main concerns with these at-home devices is the risk for damage to the eyes because of the, the outputs. Like, what is the safety mechanism in place? And you know, you could actually make that kind of argument for really a lot of things that are sold to consumers. Um, you know, a, a curling iron, you can burn yourself. So it's kind of like, all right, um, when it comes down to it, most manufacturers have, I mean, pretty much all manufacturers, it's in their best interest that consumers not have bad, you know, damage to their eyes. So they really, really do put a lot of effort and attention to that point. And when, what I noticed about the Kenzie device is that it will not activate unless there is skin on skin contact there so that the eye area, so that the, you know, your, your eyes are not seeing the light and it's a very small head a lot of people complain about the the head itself being too small that it ends up taking forever but that's much better it's, it's much safer that way you, where you have a small area i would not use this around the eye area like to groom your eyebrows so i'll put some references it's not the kind of thing that you can just do once or twice because remember the energy is targeting hair follicles that are either in the growing phase and it's going to make them go to sleep or it's, it's causing them to either fibrose or miniaturize. So you're gonna get some hair follicles that are just going to go to sleep and then wake back up again. So it's something that you have to repeat in order to, to get that widespread reduction and ultimate loss of hair in the area. It's definitely going to be time intensive, um, especially given the fact that the head is small, which is good, protects your, you know, safer for your eyes, but you know, you're gonna have to do multiple passes and whatnot. So it's, it's going to be time intensive and you may not like that, but this video is not sponsored by Kenzie. I'm not sure how it compares to others on the market. I do have patients who use it and are really happy with it. And I have not seen a patient in my clinical experience who has used this and had a burn or anything, but that doesn't mean it can't happen, especially if you have Fitzpatrick phototype four, five, and six. So, you know, it seems like a good device, but I have no way of knowing how it compares to all the others out there. And so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but, you know, I've never actually purchased the device myself or used it. I had hair, laser hair removal in the past, so I don't have a need to use it. Um, so I can't comment on if it actually is like, if, if it holds up, if it, you know, peters out after a while. I don't, I don't know much about, about its longevity, I guess you will say, but I did notice that they do have a warranty on their website. So, you know, for whatever that's worth, but comment below if you've used the Kenzie, how it worked out for you. Like, did it yield sustained improvement? I would love to know, but yeah, that is, that's what I can tell you about that. Um, yeah, it's Sunday, so I, you know, it's actually already afternoon time. I swear, like, weekends, they just blend into the week and fly by just as quickly. It's like too much, but I have a cute outfit on that I'm going to share with you guys. All right, so I got these shorts from a website called Very Shop but they're the brand Onzi, Onzi, I don't know. They're so comfortable. Yeah, I have been living in the bike shorts for the past year, <laughs> and so I needed a new pair. I wanted to get a new pair, and I thought these were adorable, and they're really comfortable. They have like a kind of satiny finish. Um, I think they sell them at Nordstrom also. I'll list them down below. And then I'm just wearing a white t-shirt from Amazon. This is Hanes, just a basic white tee. It's not as smooth. It's not smooth though, like my 32 degree t-shirts. I prefer those, except I like that this is V-neck. I love V-neck, whereas the 32 degree ones from Costco, the slinky ones, they, they're scoop neck, which is not my favorite. I wish, I think they have V-neck ones. I, they need to get those back in stock. But yeah, I like Hanes. Um, they're comfortable. I think they're like, I don't know, six bucks on Amazon. They're really inexpensive. Um, and then I just have my slippers on and some little, earrings are hard to show, gold balls. 
So yeah, that's what's going on. Oh, and I'm wearing my Dermatology SPF 46 Universal Tint Sunscreen on my face. I love that stuff. All right, so we go from laser hair removal to making gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I thought I would make these. Um, I haven't made them in a while, but it's just coconut flour. And usually I add stevia, but I got this allulose at Costco and I've really been enjoying it. It's a, here, let me put it in focus. It's an alternative, um, no sugar sweetener. It's derived from like raisins, I think. So it's natural. There's no artificial sweetener or anything in here. Um, you get this at Costco. So I thought I would try it with that. And you could use any milk of your choosing, but I'm gonna use soy milk. And then I'm gonna use these Lily's dark chocolate baking chips. These are sweetened with stevia, but they are gluten free. If you have, I'm not gluten free. These just happen to be gluten free. Um, and then baking powder. Um, I have about one and a third banana here. That's kind of spotty. I peeled. And then some cinnamon. So. Just gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I had to take out the stuff that I was storing in there. Does anybody else store like random pans in their oven so they don't feel like putting them away? It's four tablespoons of coconut flour. And then it is an eighth of a teaspoon, or excuse me, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. And just a sprinkling of cinnamon. I'm not going to be as liberal as I normally am with the cinnamon because I don't want it to overtake everything. And, and I'm just going to give this a mix. All right, and then this little bowl, I'm just going to mash my banana with a fork here. in the banana. <clears throat> and then the liquid, you kind of want to add it in tablespoon at a time. That way you don't just kind of, it, it'll vary a little bit, but I usually do about three or four tablespoons of liquid. So I'm just going to do one at a time and fold it in. I guess to be the right consistency. All right, and then you want to fold in about four tablespoons of chocolate chips. And then any normal person would have a cookie sheet, but I don't have one because mine got kind of warped and I keep intending to get a new one, <laughs> but I've been doing this makeshift cookie sheet. I have a mini muffin tin, <laughs> just lay my silk hat over it. <laughs> So 
while my cookies are baking, I'm going to make myself a smoothie. Um, similar to the one I made yesterday, but I'm gonna put blueberries in today. very brown banana and I'm going to do a few handfuls of washed blueberries and then let's just throw in the rest of the soy milk and one of the four Siggy packets cinnamon out I'm just gonna add a little bit of cinnamon too why not I think there's cinnamon in the four sigmatic protein powder but Topped it with hemp seeds and blue and more blueberries. That <laughs> will be fun to uh, drink at, out of the bottom. Just came out of the oven and let them cool there. And once they're done, we'll have a delicious banana chocolate chip coconut cookie. All right, let's try this. Mmm, really good. Yeah, I've really been on a smoothie kick lately. I don't know. I'm getting excited for summer. I say that, but once summer is here and it's sweltering, I will no longer be enthused. Blueberries are a good source of antioxidants. Yeah, the hemp seeds on this give it a nice little chew, but they suck up in this glass straw. <clears throat> they suck up. <laughs> Like, like, you know, teacher's pet, hemp seeds. That's quite good. Yeah, the Four Sigmatic protein powder, it kind of gives smoothies like a cake battery taste. I don't know how to explain it other than cake batter. It's um, not overly sweet, but it has that kind of underlying battery taste, like batter. All right, so I just polished off my smoothie. I'm gonna have one of my cookies now. They came together really nicely. And they have a nice little, sin not singed, that's the wrong word. Nice browned bottom. Mmm. They're really good. Um, if you hate banana though, this is an incredibly versatile recipe. You can use applesauce, pumpkin. You can also use peanut butter. That comes out really good. The allulose, I don't think is necessary, but it, just having a liquid sweetener, I think just kind of helps with the overall, help, helps shape them into balls better. But you could also put the dough in the freezer or the refrigerator for a little while to firm up and that would make it easier. Well, hey guys, I am going to go to sleep now. It's quite late and tomorrow is a whole nother week of tasks to do. So I better go to sleep so I am energized to do those things. <laughs> I hope you guys had a great weekend. I know I did. Although I can't really recall what exactly I did, but it was fun nonetheless. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.
Bye.